let us now talk about hypothesis testing and we will refer back to the example of estimation of the weight of Sachin's bat given that we have a sample of 100 matches and we have Sachin's scores in those matches. In the previous video we have seen a typical output from computer packages such as MATLAB and R and suppose based on the observed sample of 100 matches one can get from any of these software pack packages the value of the MLE estimate theta hat as well as its standard error and now the question is whether the weight of Sachin's bat is indeed 10 kgs or not and a bat manufacturing company might be interested in that kind of a hypothesis however it's it's the uncertainty arises because we have a single observation a single sample of 100 matches instead of that we could have observed another set of 100 matches and so on so because of the sampling variability there is uncertainty and that's what we are testing our hypothesis in the backdrop of so whether theta equal to 10 kg given that there is sampling uncertainty so the hypothesis that we are going to test is called the null hypothesis which always is the default so the null hypothesis is the default or the status quo if we do not have any a priori reason to believe otherwise that's the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis is the one that is that the null hypothesis is being tested against when the alternate hypothesis involves simply a not equal to sign means we do not want the theta to be either greater than 10 kgs or less than 10 kgs then this type of test is called a two-tailed test if it's a single inequality uh, if the alternate hypothesis is a single inequality then we may be interested in a one-tailed test also so for hypothesis testing we need to define what is called a test statistic so a test statistic is something that will tell us how far our estimator is from 10 kgs the value that we are testing against in general the word statistic refers to something which can be estimated from the observed sample so this is from the observed sample what can then intuitively be a good choice of the test statistic if we simply take the difference between our estimate theta hat and 10 kgs then that would tell us how far away it is from 10 kgs so one can choose a test statistic z which is theta hat minus 10 now however this is uh, subjective like for example I can get a theta hat which is 10.33 or I can get a theta hat which is 11 or I can get a theta hat which is 9 which out of these two shall we choose this merely this test statistic merely tells us the difference between theta hat and 10 kgs whether the difference whether the difference is large enough that is governed by the standard error of theta hat so how far away our estimator is from 10 kgs is given by theta hat minus 10 and how far is far enough is defined by the standard error of theta hat therefore we not only need to use the difference between theta hat and 10 kg but also need to standardize it the appropriate test statistic then is theta hat minus 10 divided by the standard error of theta hat where the numerator tells us how large theta hat how large is the difference between theta hat and 10 kgs and the denominator tells us how large is large enough right so then we can reject the null hypothesis at 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence if the modulus of z observed is greater than some critical value 
So Z1 minus alpha by 2, this is something that we had seen earlier. This is the 1 minus alpha by 2th quantile of the standard normal distribution. This is nothing but my critical Z value, Z critical. So if the absolute value of the test statistic which is given by the modulus of z observed we are interested in the absolute value because we do not want the theta hat to be either greater than 10 kgs or less than 10 kgs so if theta hat is greater or lesser both are the situations where the difference between theta hat and 10 kgs is large right so therefore we take the absolute value the modulus of z observed if that is greater than some critical value then that then we reject the null hypothesis and this critical value depends on the confidence level at which we are carrying out the hypothesis. So if alpha equal to 0 0.05 then we can reject the null hypothesis at 95% confidence if the modulus of z observed which we get from our observed sample is greater than the z critical at that alpha right. Now here uh, I want you to take note and remember in particular two things. The first one is that we always reject the null hypothesis or not. Which means that all we are trying to see is whether our observed sample has enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis or there is not enough evidence any other form of hypothesis testing is not possible in this setting what i mean by that is you cannot out of this analysis conclude that the alternate hypothesis can be accepted or the alternate hypothesis can be rejected the null hypothesis can be accepted no neither of these possibilities are uh, explorable in this context all we can examine is whether there is evidence to reject the null hypothesis or not. That's all we can do. The second thing is any test statistic should tell us the difference between the estimate and the value we are testing it against. But that is not enough. How far is far enough? How large a difference is large enough? this concept is important and that is determined by the standard error so theta hat as well as the standard error of theta hat they are both important for the test statistics both important for the test statistic So this z1 minus alpha by 2 is something that we calculate or observe from the standard normal table. So we looked at how to reject the null hypothesis or not to reject it given a certain confidence level or the level of significance alpha. So that's a rather objective method of testing the null hypothesis we can also use an alternate and perhaps a little more popular method which is using something called the p-value so the p-value is nothing but the measure of strength of evidence that the sample data provides against the null hypothesis now let us write it mathematically or uh, a combination of uh, English language and mathematically which is p-value is the probability that we have an evidence as strong as observed or stronger evidence this strong or stronger given the null hypothesis is true so assuming conditional on the null hypothesis being true what is the probability of observing a data as extreme as you have observed that's the definition of p-value remember what we are trying to do here we are trying to see if we have evidence to reject the null hypothesis or not now here i would like you to pause and think a little bit about 
when about the condition when you should reject the null hypothesis should you reject it for large p value or should you reject it for small p value the answer is you should reject the null hypothesis when the p value is low let us discuss why this is intuitive because all the p value is telling us is how likely we would how likely it is to observe a data as the one we have observed if the null hypothesis is true what happens when that p value is low the p value is low would mean that if the null hypothesis is true the probability of getting the observed data as we have observed is very very low but we have already observed the data the data is the reality so what could have gone wrong the assumption that the null hypothesis is true is perhaps wrong so this means that to begin with the conditional assumption that the null hypothesis is true is perhaps wrong if the probability of observing the data as we already have is very low under the null hypothesis because the fact that we have observed the data as we have observed is reality it's the eternal truth we cannot change the reality so what could have gone wrong the assumption that the null hypothesis is true and therefore we reject the null hypothesis when the p value is low now if you are a little confused about this and try to think it and make it clear in your head if you still cannot then there's a shortcut way to remember this about hypothesis testing just mug it up p value is low would mean reject the null hypothesis end of the word right so for sutton's bat then the p value would be given by twice the probability of observing any z any test statistic which is greater than the z observed assuming that the null hypothesis is true so theta equal to 10 kg is the null hypothesis if that is true then what is the probability of observing a sample which is more strong than the observed test statistic z observed right again we are interested in the absolute value and an important question here is why we are multiplying the probability two times because we are considering a two tailed test so if the probability of observing a data as strong as we have observed or stronger assuming theta equal to 10 kg is low if the p value is low then we reject the null hypothesis uh, what typically is low is a little subjective but in many cases uh, if you have a data which tells you which tells you a strong story you would see that a low probability low p value would mean as low as very very close to zero so p value low would mean very very close to zero 